A reading from Isaiah, the 53rd chapter. Who has believed what they heard from us? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him and no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his stripes we are healed. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. A reading from 2 Corinthians, the first chapter. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God and Timothy, our brother, to the church of God that is at Corinth, with all the saints that are in the whole of Achaia. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our affliction, so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. For as we share abundantly in Christ's sufferings, so through Christ we share abundantly in comfort too. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. A reading from St. John, the 18th chapter. When Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley, where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, for Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas, having procured a band of soldiers and some officers from the chief priests and the Pharisees, went there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that would happen to him, came forward and said to them, Whom do you seek? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said to them, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. So he asked them again, Whom do you seek? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you seek me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. Of those whom you gave me, I have lost not one. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. So Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into its sheath. Shall I not drink the cup that the Father has given me? O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. In the name of Jesus, Amen. On January 17, 2004, a 66-ton sperm whale died and was beached on the southwestern coast of Taiwan. Two weeks later, some genius got the brilliant idea to truck the dead whale to a laboratory for it to be dissected. It took 50 men and three cranes 13 hours to hoist this beast onto a flatbed truck. And as you could imagine, people flooded into the streets to watch this thing be carried through their downtown. And that's when it happened, downtown, as the truck crawled through the city with the crowds looking on, the whale exploded. It's a true story. Go look it up if you want to see the pictures, that's on you. The insides of that whale splattered on cars and people and the shops, and the traffic was clogged up for hours. And I don't even want to know 
what it smelled like. But I bet you nobody saw that coming. And sometimes life is like an exploding whale. Nobody sees it coming. You're just going about your business, and all of a sudden a whale explodes. Something bad happens, something hard. Something that leaves us hurt and confused. Something that makes us ask questions that start with, why? Why did she leave me? Why did he have to die so young? Why did we lose so much money? Why does our child cause us so much pain? Well, in the Garden of Gethsemane, on the night in which Jesus was betrayed, that was Malchus. He was just going about his business. He was doing his job. And then before you know it, the whale explodes for him. Suddenly he has his right ear cut off by St. Peter. Bet you Malchus didn't see that coming either. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place where Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas, having procured a band of soldiers and some officers from the chief priests and the Pharisees, went there with lanterns and torches and weapons. The crowd that assembled there was made up of Romans who controlled the state, the chief priests who controlled the temple, and the Pharisees who controlled the, the, the daily re religious life of the people. That's like the Supreme Court and the Congress of the United States sending the FBI or the CIA after you. You've got every aspect of life coming down on you like a ton of bricks or more likely an exploding whale. And who's leading this group of people with so much firepower and so much muscle? Of course, it's Judas who would betray Jesus. And then... Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. For Malchus, that's when the whale explodes. So think about your own life. And how have messes shown up? How was that question, why? shown up in your life. You're doing everything you can just to survive at times. You've got to call the bank. You have to change your diet, call an attorney, tighten up your budget, have to go to counseling or rehab or therapy. Friends, whatever mess you're in, whatever whale has exploded in your life, do not give up. And I don't just mean that as a pep talk to keep your head up. I mean it because you have to look who is in control. For Judas and the Jews and the Romans, it appeared that night in Gethsemane that they were in charge. But it only appeared that way. Because we know who's really in charge. It wasn't Judas, it wasn't the Jews, it wasn't the Romans, it's Jesus. Jesus, knowing all that would happen to him, came forward. Jesus knew what was going to happen. He knew he was going to the cross. He knew, and yet he set his face like a flint to go to Jerusalem for him to be betrayed into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and die. And he comes forward. When the enemies come, Jesus goes out to meet them. When Judas approaches, Jesus doesn't turn and run away. And when Peter strikes Malchus, Jesus commands Peter to put his sword back into its sheath. Jesus knows. Jesus is in control. Listen to what Jesus says. No one takes my life from me but I lay it down of my own accord. Look at all the powers of darkness that surrounded Jesus that night in Gethsemane. And yet Jesus remains in control.
So when a whale explodes in your life, what's your plan? How are you going to deal with it? Worldly wisdom or popular wisdom is going to tell us that you need to get control of the situation. Don't spend more than what you make. Don't panic when things go wrong. Don't speak unless you're spoken to first. That's the kind of things that popular wisdom tells you to try and seek control. But the problem is, it very rarely works because you very rarely can get control. So what are we supposed to do? Instead of seeking control, we need to relinquish control. We need to give up our control because it only appears that we have it. We need to resign as the CEO of the universe because we're not. And instead we give our mess to Jesus. When the whale explodes, we give that mess to Jesus who is in control. Be humble and own your mistakes and what you've brought to a situation and give that sin to Jesus. Own it, confess it, and Jesus will release you. Notice how calm Jesus is when the enemies come with him with lanterns and torches and weapons. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken of those whom you have gave me, I have lost, not one. Jesus is calm because he trusts the scriptures. And the scriptures show us who is in control. Behold the Lamb of God who carries away the sins of the world. Jesus is in control. He's in control when the whale explodes in your life. He's in control of sin and he carries all your sin away. Just like when parents send their children to summer camp. They have to sign a form that ask who's the responsible party. If their son or daughter breaks an arm or comes down with the flu, who's responsible? And so mom and dad sign their name. That's what Jesus does. He signs his name for you with his own blood. When you were baptized, there at the font, by water and the word, Jesus takes responsibility for you. So now, as a baptized child of Jesus, when the whale explodes, Jesus is the responsible party, not you. Now it's his job to see you through. Jesus is the good shepherd. You are the sheep. Jesus is the, is the bridegroom, and you are the bride. Jesus is the teacher. You are the student. Because one of three things is happening in your life right now. You're either headed for a mess, you're in a mess, or you're coming out of a mess. No matter which one of those three you fall under, you don't have to become anxious or hopeless or faithless. You can stay calm because Jesus is in control. So when a whale does explode, Jesus gives to you his perfect peace. When a whale explodes, Jesus reaches out his hand to heal you. 
For proof, all we have to do is look to Malchus. For Jesus reaches out his hand and heals him. In the name of Jesus, amen. The peace of God which surpasses understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds through faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.